Ah, I got myself some new Bluetooth headphones. Let's see how they work. You need an app? Just a subscription? Nein, 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 nein! I'm gonna make my own Bluetooth headphones with my rules, completely open source, and you can have one too. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem, and of course, that was vastly exaggerated. Some Bluetooth headphones are not the way I like them. Some need special apps that maybe get lost over time in the App Store, and some have subscriptions attached to them or just work with specific devices, not just any Bluetooth device. I don't like that. I think there should be an open source variant of everything. And this time we're building Bluetooth headphones. If you like your Bluetooth headphones, that is completely okay. Great that you have found a product that you like. I personally love these headphones. These are K240s by AKG. My dad uses a pair of these since like 40 years. And of course I also bought one. They're still made because they're just great. But they only come with a cable, not Bluetooth. And of course there are real studio headphones like these with Bluetooth connection, but they're really expensive and I like these ones. So I want to add Bluetooth to those, not just to any headphones. Although you can add it to any headphones with this project. Maybe you should build one yourself and add Bluetooth to your favorite headphones. From a technical standpoint, there are just a few bits to a Bluetooth headset. You have a microcontroller that does the connectivity via Bluetooth to the outside world, to your devices like your phone, your computer, or whatever you want to connect. Then there is a DAC, a digital to analog converter. Sometimes it's inside the microcontroller, but usually you use a dedicated IC for that because it has usually better quality and is also configurable for whatever your device has to drive. Sometimes there is also an amplifier in there, like basically if you're building a Bluetooth speaker, you will need an amplifier. Maybe you can run headphones directly off the DAC, could be. And there's of course a battery and good headphones also have the charger included. So you basically have a charging circuit. I think that's it. So let's just whip up a custom PCB and do the thing and build one. Alrighty, I have my design made by Isla, populated all the bits and bobs, tried to connect to it. And it doesn't enumerate the USB-C port and the USB to UART chip, they, they, they're not recognized by the computer. So uh, I think there is an error somewhere in here. So uh, well, I should have probably started with a, a preliminary design, like just doing it with an Arduino and like some modules. The easy way that you can do at home, that would have been a smarter idea. Just prototyping it with ready-made modules and then whipping up a custom PCB. Uh, could I do some time travel? Uh, no, we haven't done that episode yet. Ah, that's right, we didn't do that episode yet. Uh, could you do some editing magic, perhaps? Oh yeah, sure. Thank you. Thankfully, I'm super smart and I always use a breadboard to prototype all my circuits before I put time and effort into designing a custom PCB manufacturing, populating all that jazz. So I know that my design works and then I put it into KiCad and into a custom PCB. So what we have here is a DF Robot Fire Beetle. It's a development board like an Arduino that runs an ESP32, the very normal ESP32, no S2, no C3, nothing of that. We need the normal one because that has a reliable Bluetooth audio library. Also over here, we have an I2S audio module. This has an DAC, the digital to analog converter on there that is connected by I2S to the microcontroller, whatever that is. So I2S means, I don't know really sure what this is about. So I2S is basically like I2C, which is inter-integrated circuit, a protocol that connects integrated circuits together with a serial protocol. And I2S is pretty much the same thing, but it's specific for sound uh, devices. 
So it's AskRC for sound. I don't really know if there is an official explanation of the abbreviation. I don't really think so. I just I think they've wanted to be clever with naming it similar to I2C. On my protoboard I use these jumper wires to connect the I2S port to the I2S module. Uh, on an ESP32 you can basically use pretty much any pin for that and just tell it which pins you are using because it has a thing called pin mux which allows you to individually set that. So you don't have to use the I2C pins or some dedicated I2S pins for that. You can basically choose whatever pins you like on an ESP32. So I hooked them up, gave them power and also I've added a little cap uh, just to stabilize the voltage because audio applications and analog stuff likes to have stable reference voltages. Make sure to download the schematic on the Element 14 community page. This is where we keep all the code CAD and stuff for each episode. It's linked below this video and it will surely help you hook up your own uh, DIY headphones if you build it with the modules. And if you are interested in the other schematic for the big DIY thing with a custom PCB, that is also there. All right, can we connect to the thing now? No, we can't. We need some code. Let's out over to the computer to the Arduino IDE. Welcome to my computer and the Arduino IDE. This time it's really minimal code. That's why it's called minimal audio. This is basically just the example code that you get with the BT audio library. So you include that library, give the speaker or the headphones a name, in my case, just ESP speaker, begin this uh, audio function. <laughs> you can reconnect if it fails and these pins just define where's the I2S port that we activate in here. On the ESP32, you can pretty much freely assign GPIOs to specific functions and by just assigning these pins uh, to the I2C port, we do just that. And that's it. There's nothing going on in the loop. Minimal code. Yeah. Hello, I'm James from Workbench Wednesdays, a show about the stuff found on your electronics workbench. Look for new episodes on, well, Wednesdays. You can connect with me over on the Element 14 community. I look forward to seeing you. For now, it is time to get back to watching this week's project video. Let's try out the Bluetooth headphones. So I supply power with USB-C, no USB micro in that case, to my prototype because the only battery that I have has a different connector than this board. So I just use that for simplicity. And here I have my phone and I'm now looking for a Bluetooth device and there is one called ESP speaker. I'm gonna connect to it. That should be it. Okay, it's now connected. And I'm going to look up a video from my favorite YouTube channel. Oh, there's a good one. Multimeter buying guide. Sounds like you can hear them. Yep, of course I can make it louder. Also available on the market are DMMs, which are the opposite. They're a DMM with a... Oh, that works great. Of course, I can hear now James explaining multimeters. Now we have the easy version with Bluetooth modules and a ready-made microcontroller. If you just solder that together and button it up, you have your own homemade Bluetooth headphones that you can just add to any good headphones that you have or just build the rest of the headphones yourself as well. Just add a little amplifier to them if you want. Okay, now for the tricky part. Buttoning that all up into a custom PCB and see if we can get a real open source project started. Okay, so in my book to have an open source hardware solution, you should be able to replicate the project by just using the schematics, the provided files with the PCB and stuff, and sourcing the components yourself to build it. So it basically has to be open source from the ground up, not just by this module, by that module, put them together. That's not open source in my book. You should have it to the component level. And also all the libraries should be open that you use. So ideally you would have to have no additional libraries, but of course 
you build upon the shoulders of giants of other people's open source work. So all the libraries used should also be open source. Speaking of that, let's start with the tricky part, KiCad. Welcome to my computer and KiCad. This is the full schematic for the Bluetooth headphones. It is basically divided in a few parts that we quickly go over. We have the USB 32 mini on here. Then we have a USB to UART bridge. Here we have a USB-C port. I've used that in previous projects. This is ESD protection. We have two switches. This is the I2S audio amp. And here is the battery management circuit. And this here is my replacement for this special parts, which is two MOSFETs in one package. And I've changed that to an alternative with uh, two discrete MOSFETs instead. If we put that into perspective on a physical design, this is it, this is how it looks like. And if we put that in 3D, then we get this thing. And now I'm sending this over to Eisler to get it manufactured. And then we're gonna have fun populating super tiny little components. So I got the PCB back from Isla, populated it, and it doesn't really enumerate on the port, but I found the error. See, it's really easy to fry the USB to UART bridge if you use too much heat while soldering. So I made another one and soldered that with a different solder paste and lower on heat. So now it enumerates. Now we have to program it. And there is also a little problem. Okay, two lessons are here to be learned. First, rarely a bigger open source project works the first try. So if you first don't succeed, don't give up, try again and again, and eventually you will figure out stuff. I failed once and I figured out stuff. And now I have a software issue that I can solve myself because I'm not good enough of a programmer for that. Uh, but here is briefly what it is. I've used the ESP32 Mini 1 module on there for my Bluetooth communications and as a microcontroller. That is not the same as an ESP32 just in Mini. If you buy an ESP32 S2 and then you buy an ESP32 S2 Mini, that's the same thing, just different form factor. If you buy an ESP32 Mini, that is not an ESP32 in Mini, it's an ESP32 Solo in Mini, apparently. So the Solo is the single core variant of the ESP32 and that is not yet in the Arduino core for ESP32, which means I can't con uh, communicate with it, I can't program it, which is a pain. And also the libraries, I think, don't work on that yet. So I avoided using the ESP32 C3 because I was told there are still, because it's a new chip, it's still not like very well done to implement, implement Bluetooth audio on there. So I used the normal ESP32 as we've seen with the breadboard prototype. And then I didn't take care about what it is actually is that I'm ordering or designing in on the parts. So part numbers do matter. This project has two of these. One is the mix up with ESP32 and Mini is apparently a solo. Mm -hmm. But there's also the CP2102 for the USB to UART bridge on there. There's an N version and a non-N version and they are different. And also both of them, it seems, are available with a different pin count. So the footprints aren't interchangeable. And I used a variant that was not on stock in my design, but I thought it was like one of those that are in stock, but it's not. So I made it work by sheer luck because uh, some of the pinups dipped lined up and I got matching chips and that worked out. But then I ran into the next issue. So always be aware that little differences in, in numbers can make all the difference for your project. Which means we have working Bluetooth headphones, but we don't have the small, fully integrated design yet. So in this video we made open source Bluetooth headphones. They're not ready yet for production. I either have to change the microcontroller or wait for a significant software update to make this fully functional. I will probably just spin another board. 
but you can already make your own version with the ready-made modules, the DF Robot Fire Beetle and the I2S amplifier module and get going right away. All the code and CAD and stuff that you need is on the Element 14 community. If you have ideas for stuff that we should build on the show, like what do you wish would be available as an open source variant, so you're not at the mercy of Big Corp, let us know on the Element 14 community. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.